This is a lesson for solving equations involving multiplication and division. So writing equations for multiplication and division is a lot like writing equations for addition and subtraction. The difference is that you will need to think about the numbers in groups to equal a total. So rather than thinking about a number um, plus another number or adding a number to another number equals, equals a number, or taking a number away from a number to equal a number, you're thinking about um, how many groups of a certain number there are. Because that is the basics of multiplying and dividing. So when you're thinking about multiplication, remember that it is the opposite operation for division. So just as adding is opposite to subtraction, multiplying is opposite for division. And this means that any multiplication equation can be turned into a division equation. So, we can look down here is it for an example. So I've got 4 times a equals 12. Now remember that a few lessons ago I pointed out that when you have a variable, a letter, divide, er, uh, beside, when you have a letter beside the a number and there is no sign in between, it means that it is multiplying. And when you're multiplying a number by a variable, you should not put the multiplying sign in there because a multiplying sign um, is an X. And that gets confusing when you're using letters in there. And that's the whole reason why mathematicians don't use the, the X symbol, the multiplying symbol, when using variables because it gets confusing. So you just take it out of there, and so you have 4 times a, or you could say 4a, equals 12. And um, so in this case, a would equal 3, because 4 times 3 equals 12. And uh, this can also be written as 12 divided by a equals 4. And I know this is right, because a could be 3 in this case as well. So 12 divided by 3 would equal 4. So, um, in either case, it is 3, and those are uh, mirrored equations. So, let's do a practice. Um, it says solve each equation. So, we've got um, multiplying and dividing equations here. So, if you think that you can do this without further instruction, then please pause the video and then play again once you're finished to see if you've got it correct. If not, make sure you watch the explanation. And if you aren't quite sure, then we'll do the first one or two together, and then you'll try. So, um, this is the first one. 5 times b equals 30. So, we need to think of a number that b could equal, that b could be, um, to make 5 times something equal 30. So, we need to think of our five times tables. So, we could um, skip count by fives because there's a five right here until we get to 30. So, we could go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And I would do this on my fingers, but since this is a video, I, I tallied it out. And um, it looks like I've got six. I, got six groups of five to equal 30. Okay, so that means that five times six equals 30. And we can check to see if that's correct. So we write five times six, and yes, that does equal 30. So we know that we are correct. Okay, so we're just thinking of a number that would go in place of the letter to make the equation make sense. If you think you've got it now, please pause the video and then do this one. If not, let's do this one together as well. So in this case, we've got, we need to think of a number here that when it's divided by three, it will equal seven. Now I can use my strategy in this case of knowing that um, I can reverse this equation to make it a multiplication equation, to make it easier to think. So remember, you can, you can reverse the front and end letters 
and it will make sense, especially when you're changing from uh, dividing to multiplying. So when I switch these, the sign turns into a multiplying rather than a dividing. And now I can think of it as 7 times 3 equals h. So now I know that h equals 21 because 7 times 3 equals 21. And we can check to make sure that this is right. So we go 21 divided by 3 and that equals 7. Okay, and you didn't it's okay if you didn't go through this process, if you didn't multiply, if you just thought in your head of a number divided by 3, or maybe you pulled out your multiplication chart in your agenda and you found multiples of 3 and 7 and found that um, h equals 21 in that way. Or maybe you just know your 7 times tables really well and you, uh, you figured it out that way in your head. There are many ways you could figure it out. All right, so if you haven't tried this one yet, please pause the video and then play again once you're finished. And if you are finished, then we need to figure this out together. So we are thinking of a number that could divide 63 and equal 9. So again, if I flip-flop these numbers, and in this case, uh, since the 63 is in the front, then I would keep the sign the same, right? Because 63 divided by a number would equal t, just like 63 divided by 9 would equal t. Okay, so if this helps, you could think of it in this way. So 63 divided by 9, you could get t. Okay, and then so if you know your 9 times tables then you know that this would be 7. 7 times 9 is 63. Okay, and then so that we can check and see if this is right. So uh, 63 divided by 7, and this is where you might use your multiplication chart in your agenda to see if this is correct. Ms. Bashforth just knows her 9 times tables really well. Uh, 63 divided by 7, well, that equals 9, so that makes sense. Notice I just put the 9 on the other side. Okay, so over here in this one, um, I switched the sign because it's the front number of the dividing um, equation, right? H is in front of 3. And then over here, the sign stayed the same because 63 is the first number in dividing. It's just like um, in subtracting where it matters which number is in the front and which number is in the back because this is asking okay I have 63 uh, counters and I want to divide them into a certain number of groups how many is in each group well nine is in each group okay so you could also draw a picture if you don't have your agenda you could say okay I need 63 dots and I have nine groups how many is in each group so you start out drawing dots or you could get manipulatives, little counters, and you could count them out. There are many ways to figure this out. All right, so if you have not done the story problem yet, please pause the video and then um, play again to see if you've got the right answer. And um, now that you have the answer, let's see what it says. So. Clive watched the first snow of the season fall outside his window. Each hour, three centimeters of snow fell. The total snowfall was 15 centimeters. For how many hours did it snow? Write an equation to solve this problem. So the first thing we need to do is write a let statement to make um, our variable equal something. So I chose let h equal the number of hours that it snowed. And I chose H because it's um, time in hours. Okay, so now we have H as our variable and um, we need to write an equation now. So these are the numbers we're going to use. We're going to use three centimeters and we're going to use 15 centimeters. And there's, a, there's a number of ways that we could do this. So one equation that you could write is, um, we know that there were 15 centimeters 
15 centimeters. And we know that it, the snow fell for th um, three centimeters each hour. So 15 would equal three centimeters times the number of hours that the snow fell, right? So 15 is the total and we get 15 because we have three centimeters times the number of hours. Now you could also write 15 divided by three equals the number of hours or you could have written 15 divided by the number of hours equals three centimeters for every hour. There, there are a number of ways that you could have done this, okay? Um, in, and there's one more equation and it could have just been h times three up here, like 15 equals h times three, which is basically the same. Okay, in any case, you're going to get the same number for h for whatever equation. So you, when you're solving, only need to think of one equation and solve for h. But these are the ones that you could have used. So um, in this case, we need to think of a number that uh, 3 multiplies by to get h. In this case, we need to divide 15 by 3. And in this case, we need to think of a number that 15 can divide by to get 3. Now, for me, um, one of these ones would be the easiest for me to think about. Uh, 15 divided by 3 is nice because the variable is on, on its own, and that's usually when it's the easiest to think about. So if I think, um, if I have 15 counters and I put them into groups of 3, how many groups do I have, right? Or I could think of 3 times what equals 15. So 3 times what, well, I'm pretty good with my 3 times tables, and h would equal 5. So you might want to use your um, multiplication chart in your agenda for this, or um, just using mental math. Okay, and then we can check. We can go... Um, 15, does that equal 3 times 5? Yes, 3 times 5 is 15. So then we would finish off with a sentence. So here's my sentence. It snowed for 5 hours. It doesn't have to be a intricate sentence. Um, it just needs to show that you know what you solved, what part of the problem you solved. All right, so um, now that we've done that, it's time to do your assignment, and your assignment is page 27 to 28, numbers 1 to 8. So the first part of this is pretty easy, and it's going to go fast. Um, I hope. Good luck.